Welcome to vibrant world of Semicon West Conference based in beautiful city of San Francisco. We'll take you on a short trip today to see what's happening at the conference. So let's go together on this short trip. Let's go. Renewed as one of the largest and most influential events in the semiconductor industry, Semicon West brings together professionals, innovators and thought leaders from around the globe. With its rich history and reputation for showcasing cutting-edge technologies, this conference offers a unique platform for networking, learning and exploring the latest advancements in the semiconductor field. From breakthrough innovations to industry trends, Semicon West promises to be a captivating experience providing valuable insights and opportunities to all attendees. So, get ready to immerse yourself in the dynamic atmosphere of Semicon West as you discover the future of semiconductor technology in the heart of San Francisco. So, our first guest today for this brief chit-chat about Semicon West and what's happening presently in the semiconductor industry is uh, President of uh, VAT of US. Tom Murphy, my good friend from a long time. Tell me your take about Semicon West. Well, How do you see Semicon West today compared with previous years? Well, I think coming out of the pandemic, there was a challenge with attendees, but this Semicon West seems really well attended. We have good presence from Asia, which I think is important. Mm -hmm. We didn't have that the last uh, go around. And um, there seems to be a general excitement. So, <clears throat> how about VAT? Where are you presently as a company when you look bigger scheme with semiconductor? How well, do you feel about the semiconductor industry? Well, I think uh, we agree and we feel that we're going to, the semiconductor industry is on the trajectory to the one trillion uh, mark by 2030. So our focus right now is, is really getting ready for that. We want to be two years ahead of the curve. So at VAT, we have, um, even though the industry is down a bit now, we have massive investments going on in Switzerland, in our plants in Romania, and a new plant under construction in Malaysia. So our plan is to have uh, double the factory output capacity ready by 2027. So we're two years plus ahead of uh, you know, the industry growth. So you feel good about semiconductor in general? Oh, for sure. I mean, the digitalization of our life is not slowing down. You know that, Zoran. Exactly. It's How only do you feel accelerating. About artificial intelligence and everything. I think, into mix. I think we're just on the edge of artificial intelligence right now. And what artificial intelligence could do generally for humans in our life is going to be really interesting. And it's going to happen in our lifetime. But uh, the artificial intelligence is also going to drive the need for a lot of advanced semiconductors. I mean, everybody talks about these very expensive NVIDIA chips right now that are, that are being driven by artificial intelligence. But don't forget, it, we're also going to need a lot of memory you know, as you start to compete. Exactly. Kind of start to convert these data centers. And then artificial intelligence for me will be a platform. What what else is that going to drive? I don't think we really know right now. It's kind of like the iPhone. You know, the iPhone came out and then that became a platform for all sorts of other technologies, you know, social media, and the list goes on and on. And all of that is built on the foundation of semiconductors. At this moment, when you situation in Europe, okay, and I'm pretty much sure even you being president of VAT US, uh, you have uh, lots of insights what ha what's happening in the marketplace in Europe, and you see these investments happening by Intel in Europe, and etc, etc. Et so, do you think Europe is becoming uh, with this strong EU chip uh, concept actually uh, equal partner in, uh, in, 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 in this fight, semiconductor fight that we see in the, in the world with US and China, or some time for uh, Europe to catch up. Well, I think that what you're seeing right now is a regionalization of the semiconductor supply chain, mm -hmm. right? So it's clear that I think the, a lot of the governments during um, COVID realized that we're too reliant on one region. So in order to really have a good BCP plan, make sure we have continuity of supply, it's important to regionalize. So I think you're still going to see a lot of investments in China. That's not slowing down. You know about the CHIPS Act in the U.S. and the investments in the U.S., and now you're seeing this also in Europe. I think you're going to see this semiconductor industry come up in all three regions. Great. Thank you for talking. Thanks, Oran. Nice you. to see you. And so, so nice to see my colleague, uh, Gary Morgan, actually, after decades coming back and forth for these shows and everything. Uh, Gary, 
you are working in the marketing department basically. Yeah, yeah. And you're coming, you're setting up these booths that we have, not just at the Semicon West, but all other shows to the United States. So tell me, how much time takes to plan and organize all of this? Because people sometimes, they just don't pay attention to this. They think this just happened in 24 hours. There's some of these shows, like Semicon in particular, it's a full calendar year. I just yesterday set up our booth for next year. Okay. <laughs> so we, we're already starting the planning process for next year. When it's going to be, where it's going to be, what we're going to send. It, yeah, it's like a healthy show. Healthier than a lot of the other ones that I've been to, to be honest. So that's true. I it, it's a good step up, and I'm happy to see San Francisco looks a little healthier too, to be honest. So I think they gave a lift up a little actually yeah, for the show as well. It's good stuff. Thank you, Gary. Thank you for this very cool look at our trade shows that we do at the Lester Company. No Thanks. problem, brother. All the best. Thanks. And here we go, we are here again uh, at our booth, at Kurgio Lesker booth at Semicon West. And of course, I'm surrounded with my colleagues here. And one of my colleagues, it's Vice President of our Process Equipment Division, Dwayne Bingaman. Yes. Can you tell me what's happening at the Semicon West? Do you see some flux of the interest actually between people who are stopping at our booth about, to discuss about uh, uh, KDF tools? Where do we stand with that? Yeah, so there's a lot of interest. Like always? I mean, like, no, I mean, we've been very busy, busy with the KDF product line. Received a lot of orders in the last six to eight months. And at Semicon, there's, there's a fair amount of interest because we do a lot of work with semiconductor people in KDF. MRC was selling these tools 35, 40 years ago into the semiconductor industry, and people still use them today right so can you tell me uh, about future plans with kdf uh, regarding the marketing promotion uh, where do you see marketplace opening for us more than uh... yeah, so so the future plans are just to improve process capabilities and, and technologies uh, things like pulse dc for reactive films high pims um, more work into areas even outside of semiconductors um, medical devices sensors that kind of stuff perfect thank you Okay, as you can see, we're here in the main hall of Semicon West, and it's very busy actually behind me. And uh, at the same time, oops, here we go. I see a good friend of ours, actually, Turgay from hey. President, actually, of How Bush Corporation from U.S. Good so you. nice to see you here, actually. How everything works for you so far at the Semicon West? Great. I think it's uh, one of the be you know better shows. Yeah. So you have your booth here as well. We have our booths. We have around 15 people from my team. You have your strong grip on industrial market, am yeah. I correct? So how do you see yourself in, uh, in semiconductor world? We are, uh, I would say we are really growing. Okay. Semicon customers are looking for always alternative and better, better solutions. And I think with the support of our owners as well as our infrastructure in the US, we are really gaining good uh, ground. That's perfect. However, I need to ask you, which is little maybe even personal question, because I know you are of Turkish origin, yeah. and this devastating earthquake which happened in the beginning of this oh, year. Oh yeah, that was horrible. I'm hoping nobody from uh, your Thanks relatives... Thanks God, uh, nobody from my family got affected, but the epicenter was like uh, 100 miles to my hometown. Oh, it was A lot of that people close. were not very close, and a lot of people, unfortunately, were not so lucky. But is, is it Turkey recovering uh, from the they are, they are recovering. They are trying to find, you know, fix housing, build new houses, new condos. But it's taking time. It was a major disaster, as you remember. They said it's quite a quite, uh, large number of people losing lives. And yeah. uh, officials, they said it's even, it's even bigger numbers than yeah, what officials officially stated came. like 50,000. But what I hear, based on the number of houses collapsed and you know people are missing still, close to probably 200,000. Thank you, thank you so much, Turgay. It's great nice to see you. Here. Yeah, yeah great to see yeah. you, actually. Thank you. I will tell Take guys care. in Pittsburgh that I saw you as well. Thank oh, you. All the great. best. Okay. Take care. Bye. See you. Bye bye. bye. The restaurant. How are you, Giuseppe? Good, good. Thank you so much, so, guys. So tell me what's going on. What's special today? In so your today place? it's a beautiful weather, guys. We have like a salad with shrimps and fennel with lemon dressing just to start. But if you wanna try some pasta, of course, this is the right place where I'm gonna make a pasta lanerano. That it's. A, I'm from Amalfi, so it's a typical dish from Amalfi. Bravo. So that's why I come here and let's try. Bravo. I'm with.